The Red Herring Puppets are proud to present their latest production, The Big Dipper. Through stories from diverse cultures, students learn how the Big Dipper can be used as a calendar, a compass, and a clock. Performed with beautifully crafted marionettes and animated shadow figures, the Big Dipper includes stories from the ancient Chinese, the classical Greek culture, the Mi'kmaq Indians of northern Maine and Nova Scotia, and the southern slaves who followed the drinking gourd to freedom in the north. I'm Patty Lida Long. I teach third grade presently at Charles C. Bell Elementary. I've taught first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. The Big Dipper fits quite a lot of varying standards in all grade levels. We, in third grade, begin looking at less westernized uh, literature. And so learning what we can about other cultures is something huge. Uh, what's interesting how people from different cultures use the Big Dipper. They learned that people are different but have similarities. That people have different opinions. The seven stars that we call the Big Dipper are seen most of the year by more than half the world's population. But not everybody sees them as a dipper. Different people connect the dots in different ways. The Vikings thought these stars resembled Odin's wagon circling through the sky. The Egyptians knew them as the thigh of a sacred bull. The English saw them as a great plow signaling the harvest season, while the ancient Hindi called them the seven rishi, or wise men. The Chinese saw the chariot of Wen Chang, the god of literature, and his assistants. The site curriculum has a lot to do with the earth, moon, and sun, and the Big Dipper certainly filled that standard easily. We use some in math, reinforcing patterning. I like the shadow screen because it showed pictures of what you guys were talking about. Pegleg Doe and Harriet Tubman and all those names that came up in the Big Dipper story were people that third graders are familiar with and fourth graders study. When I was about ready to leave this slave plantation, Pegleg had a map to freedom. It was a song he had to put in memory, which was handy, because as a slave we was not allowed to learn to read. I'm CJ Randall. I'm the artist responsible for the 27-foot backdrop on the one end of the scroll of the slave plantation where they're picking fields versus the other end where it's Harriet Tubman and Roads to Freedom and Prosperity. I stole away from the plantation and traveled by night with that big drinking gourd in the sky pointing me in the right direction. Point to the North Star of Freedom. There is a soul to the music, and you can feel that these are songs that were meant to carry people through hard times. of it has to do with technology evolving and how it was used at home and so it was an easy task to make a connection for, to the past and the future and our present time and, and how we use technology today and the differences in the compasses and clocks today versus having to use the stars. We were talking about measurement and using non-standard measurements and so using the clock was great. The study guide was written very very well in the sense that when we went to the production the kids understood completely the story behind each of the vignettes. I know that the Big Dipper is the mama bear and the Little Dipper is the little bear. It's cool how the um, puppet just jumped up and flipped inside out. 
it is a superb production. The colors, the set, the accents of the actors, everything brought the entire puppet show to life. Late one spring, as I made the cold winter chill begin to soften, a mother bear awakened from her long winter nap. Just as far as a theatrical performance and a wonderful, authentic experience for kids to have, you can't beat it. All of a sudden, one of the kids jumped up and pointed out the Big Dipper in the sky. The amazing part about it is the puppet show was six weeks ago, and everything that was talked about during the show came out. When the drinking earth turns on like an icicle, it means it turned into winter. They were so excited to make those connections. When kids finally make connections like this, that's the point of teaching, and it's just, it brings joy. And that's really one of the better things you can do for a child is to pique his curiosity. Seeing kids just getting so excited about something, that's just what it's about.